I'm going to give you these files today. Portrait, I think this is a high res file. This is it. Let's look at it. This is at, yeah, 300. So this is a high res file, which normally you don't, you don't need in here, but whatever, it's fine. I like to start these things with a high res file. I don't think this next one. Now, here's the thing, you guys. If I go from the desktop, just so you know, and I drag this into my file, what it's going to do usually, and of course, my machine is doing weird stuff, as we know. And until I reinstall, it's probably going to keep doing this. What it usually does is if I drag something off of the desktop into a file, it's got this little icon right here. It's usually over here in the left-hand corner, but that's just the way it's doing it. That little icon means it's a smart object, okay, which we don't need for this right now. So I'm going to right click on the bar and go rasterize layer. All that's going to mean is that it's not a smart object anymore. It's just a regular object. Now, the other way I could, and there's a bunch of ways I could do this. I could just double click on the cloud, open it. I could pull the tab out, grab my move tool and just drag it in that way. And then it won't do that. As you can see, it didn't make it a smart object. I just want you to understand when you drag something in from the desktop, it usually turns it into a smart object. And we'll talk about smart objects later. But the reason that's important is because um, you won't be able to do a lot of things with it. Does that make sense? You can do a whole bunch of other things with it, but when it's a smart object, just this morning, because I run, I, even though I know this demo back and forth, I usually run through my demo before class or the day before, especially if it's more complicated. And it was giving me problems. And part of the reason I wasn't seeing the problem is because my, because my Photoshop screwed up. It wasn't showing me the icon clearly like this is a smart object that's why it's not doing this because i'm like oh great now there's a problem all i had to do is rasterize it okay and again when you rasterize an image you can right click on the bar not the word not the thumbnail on the bar okay and it'll give you the option to rasterize or you can open it up separately pull the tab out and just drag it in and then it won't turn it into a smart object okay it's just the way it works so yeah last week we looked at Levels, brightness, contrast, hue, saturation. So right here in your la um, layers, right down here. Okay, so now we're going to talk about these two things today. So we talked about this about making a new layer, deleting one. This this is just a group thing. We'll get to that later. And now we're going to talk about these are adjustment layers. So if I, and we've talked about working non-destructively. So these allow you to work non-destructively. So your common tools are in here, right here. So here's levels. And now I can, it'll give me this little window, which is my levels window. So let's just mess this up. And now, and let's say I go, and go to another adjustment layer and go to hue saturation. And I saturate it like crazy. Okay, and then I go back tomorrow and I look at this and I go, this is a mess. Go back here, go to adjustment layers. Let's go to hue saturation. I'm gonna oversaturate it. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna live right here. And I can come back in here and I can readjust this. Usually in properties. Hmm. Right here. Okay. So I should be able to double click that, bring that up. It doesn't go to properties. And now I can come back in here and I can readjust this again if I come in the next day and go, oh, that's a mess. Does that make sense? So it has, look, it has a lot of your standard tools here. And the other thing I can do if I really hate it is I can just go the heck with it and throw it out. And now I'm back to my original file, which means we're not working destructively, right? It has a lot of your common tools right here. Look, hue saturation, brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, photo filter, blah, 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 all these different things, okay, that you can now use non-destructively. Eventually, I'm assuming Adobe will make all this stuff non-destructive. I'm assuming, okay? By tomorrow, I want you guys to go around and play with those. Just play with the three that we've talked about. That's fine. You can play with any of them if you want. Just make sure you know how to adjust them. 
um, and throw them away. Does that make sense? So from here on out, we don't want to work directly on our image if we're doing like levels, adjustments, all that kind of stuff. We don't want to do that. We want to work on an adjustment layer. Okay. Does that make sense? So let's look at the second thing here. Can I ask a quick question sure. about, it's a little bit kind of related to that, but, but kind of different. Um, when you're on your history area where you have the list of all the actions you've just done, yeah. is there a way to select more than one at a time? I don't think so. Okay. It seems to me, and I could look into this, but it seems to me like history works very linear. Okay. We can set a go, but, 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 and get rid of a bunch of things or, you know, then add them back over. As far as I know, you, and I, I need to double check this. As far as I know, you can't go to something in the middle and go, I just want to delete that. Yeah, or even like um, select like multiple choices, you know, like five at a time, like, oh, the last five things or whatever. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I think you have to just click through them. Okay. I, I, think, sure. I think it got the program sees them as all linked. They're all okay. steps that are linked to another step. So they, which in some ways doesn't make sense to me, but in some ways it does. You know, yeah. Some things are linked. Um, so I just think that's the way it works. It's basically, it's a basically a visual representation of your undos. If you just kept going command Z, command Z, command Z, command Z, that's basically what it is. You know, and then if you did redo, 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 it's just a visual linear representation of that. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, and I can see like adding what you just did with your doing adjustments layer in lieu of like, you know, you could you could just take out the whole adjustment layer. So yeah. that would, yeah. That sort of eliminates that problem. Yeah, I see that. And the more that we can work smart and uh, name our files correctly. And let's say that I put graphic elements here. And these were gonna be for a layout and these are gonna be graphic elements. So I have, let's say I had a couple layers. Let's, I want one more layer. And these two layers, three layers, whatever, represent a group, which is my graphic element. I could go here, make a folder, take these things, Put them in here. Name it. And now they're a group. I can drop this down. I can adjust the layers individually. And I can also just turn them all off right here. And I'm going to go back to what we started with. Only this time I'm just going to open it. Pull the tab off, drag this in. Now I could adjust this by lowering the opacity right here so I can see through it, so I can see how it's falling on her face. So let's say right there, maybe like that. And then I'll go back up to 100%. Now, I'm gonna undo this layer, drag this one underneath. So now we have our image that we're gonna tweak on top and our image, let's put clouds here. Okay, you guys see how that's working? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so image on top. So what we're gonna do is write, okay, so now we've talked about deleting, adding a layer, groups, folders, adjustment layers, and now we're going right here to layer mask. And so what this is gonna do is, I'm gonna zero out my, my uh, foreground background swatch right here by clicking right here. And that zeroes it to black and white, because I need it to be black and white for this. And then I'm gonna go bing and hit adjustment layer and it added this little mask on here. And now I'm gonna take a soft, a nice soft brush. So I put the hardness all the way to soft and I've got it at the opacity of 52. And now it's on, I'm on black 
and you can see what it does. It starts to, it paints out and reveals what's underneath. So you said black reveals and then white conceals, yep. right? So if you wanted to like backtrack, like how much you revealed, you could just- I just, I just go, I can go X or I can use this little thing right there, or I can just go to X, just hit X. And then yes, I can paint this back in. Okay. So I have a lot of control on how I do that. And if you look right here, Oh, it's not, see, it's not showing it right here. What it'll normally show, it should show on your machines. It'll show when it puts that layer mask on there, it'll just show white. And then as you reveal things you know, out, it'll show the hole in the white. So the way I always think of this is like, you basically just put a white sheet of paper. It's, you basically made the part that you put a layer mask on sort of like a stencil. And I can cut the stencil out to reveal what's underneath it, but I can also paint the stencil back in. Because you have to get out of your mind that you're erasing. You're actually not erasing. You're painting it in or out. Like back when I was working, I would have just probably erased out the top layer. Well, now I'm stuck with that. You know what I mean? And also, I can't finesse it. I can't go, oh, that's a little off. I can't go and paint a little bit back in. I can't do any of that stuff. I don't have that flexibility. I only have the flexibility like that with a layer mask, okay? The only thing I want yeah. you to do to, by tomorrow is do this little exercise with the girl or the woman. And um, I'll give you those two files. I want you to try your um, adjustment layers and then we're set up for the project by tomorrow. Okay. Okay, guys, I will see you in the morning. Yes. All right. Thank you. See ya. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you.